Yeah. Okay, so um, this process is called lithography. Um, as I started explaining yesterday, um, it's normally done on big limestone slabs, which are about this thick, um, but we do it on pronto plate. So everything I need, I've got set up, um, which is better than I normally have. So um, you'll need rollers, ink, um, gloves, scrapers, your plates, newsprint that you can change, uh, a plate for um, mixing ink and a plate for rolling up ink, um, water bath, towel, etc. Okay, so um, what do we do to start? We mix our colours. So I'm going to do a double layer litho plate. So what I've got um, here is I've taken a pattern, a William Morris wallpaper pattern, and um, I've printed it out onto Pronto plate, um, which means that I have sized it in Photoshop, put it onto an A4 document, and I've also done a drawing that I have then shrunk down, I scanned it in upstairs on the um, photocopier, which is really easy to scan, and then in Photoshop I just copy and pasted it and made it smaller. And they were originally printed on one A4, and I've just cut them into two plates, so I'm not wasting my plate. Okay, so I'm going to print the skulls first, and then I'm going to print the background second. The reason for that is because of lining up, so this is the sort of technical stuff that you have to think about with printmaking. I've also printed this plate onto regular paper, just A4 regular paper, and I've made these little skull stencils, and they're going to act as barriers on this plate so that the skulls will stand out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, mix up my background colour. So I want loads of white, because I want it to be quite pale. So I'll just take a chunk of that actually. And I'm going to start small, just a little bit of blue, because it's going to taint that white almost instantly. And I pretty much don't want it any darker than that. But I'm going to make up quite a lot of it because I'm going to addition this print, so I might do like four or five. Which is the cool thing about printmaking is that you can addition stuff, which just means that you write down the bottom one over whatever number, that one over 20 if it's 20 prints. Okay, and I want it to be a tiny bit aqua, so I'm going to mix in tinsiest amount of green. Okay, I'm just going to work that ink until I get it all nice and even. And because with litho it has to be nice and um, kind of thinned out. So that's looking pretty good. So I can sort of scrape that into a little pile. And then I'm going to get some of it. I'm going to make sure the surface is really, really nice and clean. This is why I'm doing it on a piece of plexi plate. Um, we're going to get new glass down here, so if we keep that glass really tidy, then um, we will be fine. So we don't want any sort of dried ink lumps or anything. And I want a fair bit over here. And um, the other thing that I've chosen to do is work with um, the uh, global, the flint inks, um, just because the aquarel inks that I was using yesterday I think um, probably are maybe too tacky for litho, they'd work better for um, etching etc. So these, I know that these work, so that's what I'm using today. So, um, the other thing that I've just forgotten to grab is some black, okay, that's better. Okay, always wearing an apron when you're printmaking as well. Okay, so I'm just going to work that a little bit <coughs> so that it's a little bit looser. And I'm going to pop it over on my inking up tray. In a nice little even row that's about the width of my roller. Okay, and then I can just pop this out of the way for now. <coughs> 
Okay, if you're doing a large print, these rollers here are really good to use because um, they act like rolling pins and they're nice and heavy so you don't actually have to put any weight onto the plate. They're for litho only. Um, <clears throat> but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to use these little blue rollers which you guys all have in your um, in your print packs. And they're the best for litho, as I discovered yesterday, not the softball rollers. So you need a bit of hardness. Okay, so I'm lifting the roller. It's such a satisfying sound. So that I get a really even layer of ink. You can even go multi ways. So it's super important that this is smooth and even. Okay, so I'm going to do my little scullies first. Oh, the one thing I've forgotten is my fountain solution. Can you press stop on the record and I'll go grab that. Okay, so um, the other method of doing this is that you tape your plate to the bottom of a flat tray with no ridges and you pour the fountain solution over the top and then you can ink up using the roller in the fountain solution. But this is just an alternative method. So you get some hand drawn paper towels from the toilet and you get it nice and wet and you paint the fountain solution onto your plate and it helps to just tape your plate down in the corners. Okay, so again, always just getting that roller nice and sticky. Now with black it's kind of hard to tell um, when it's picking up the ink, but you'll get an idea. You need to do it probably about eight rounds of eight. So if we go over this eight times, so that was four, five, six, seven, eight. Helpful to have a little bit of newsprint next to you because what happens is the fountain solution picks up on the roller um, and it's oil based ink with, fount with water so it rejects each other so you just roll off in between and then reload and then you come in from this angle. Now you'll see where it's drying out, it's starting to pick up on the white areas. Um, that's just because there's no water there to reject it. Um, whereas the ink from the, um, the laser printer attracts the oil based ink. So you think ink attracts ink. So it means that I probably need to re wet my paint. And what should happen is I can either rub these little bits off or they'll, start, they'll pick up with my next ink round. Or I might have too much ink on my roller. How many was that? Seven. Eight. Let's get some of that fountain solution. So the idea is that where the water is sitting on the surface of the plate, yeah, it's going to reject the ink. And in between each roll, I'm lifting the roller and letting it spin so that it's not the same part of the roller that's going back and forth along the drawing every time, uh, the litho plate every time. come in from this direction again so you can see that it's picking up now and then I lose all that extra ink but you can see um, if you come and have a look up close that my drawing is starting to really pick up that black ink you can see it getting a little bit thicker and more um, more dense with litho it, you know all printmaking is slow and laborious like that's the kind of beauty of it well it doesn't have to be you can be like a messy quick printmaker but lots of printmaking processes take time and patience and planning, as you might have guessed by now. So if you like working that way, 
you know, it's a good technique to do. I, I quite like the um, kind of mathematical nature of it. I'm kind of just going rogue now. I've forgotten how many are counting. When you're doing it on um, on the big slabs, you've got to do it really. You've got to count each layer and each row and come from each angle. To do it on the limestone, like originally, you had to draw, draw onto the limestone, <coughs> and then you've got to um, set it with gum arabic and nitric acid, and it actually etches the image into the stone. It's quite phenomenal. I think I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so what I've got behind me, uh, over next to Portia, is some paper. And Portia, if you could be so kind as to grab one of those bits of paper out that's been soaking and dry it on the towel here. You have to move these dry ones. Now, the other thing that we can do, if we don't want any of these areas around, like my fingerprinty area, is we grab some scissors. And Rebecca, could you grab me a pair of scissors, please? So we still have to soak our paper, thank you very much, and the beauty of litho, I've accidentally printed this on both sides so just ignore the back one, so that we can just cut off the gross bits. I reckon I probably would have had enough ink on there. That goes straight back in the water. Yep, in the water, this lot all goes in the rubbish. Okay, now this one will be cooler and easier to see because I'm inking up blue ink. Now, here's the tricky bit. Okay, can you please dry my drawing? The reason I'm doing this all in one go instead of waiting overnight, so turn it on its, on its, um, so it's on a corner, and that's going to allow the most amount of water to drain. Nice and quick. Good. Um, is because paper shrinks and grows when you let it dry completely. So what would happen is if I had done it, waited overnight to do layering, um, my skulls would have got smaller. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, and I'll just do it down here by the camera, is I'm going to get my skulls and I'm going to place them over the top of the skulls on the paper, which is going to act as a barrier for this print. I'm going to do it up on the plate. So we'll just peel back the plate. And there's my little print. Okay? So the, that pattern's worked really well, exactly how I wanted it. I wanted it to be kind of palish. Um, I would have liked my skulls to be a little bit darker, so I could have inked them up a little bit longer. And what I might do is I might do a transparent flower over the top of the skulls um, and I will organise that next time. 